Are we gonna do the biggest fish and the most fish? Yes. It's gonna be a nice day. It is. On a cool spring morning in mid-March, Ray Arquette and his daughters Evelyn and Elizabeth are going fishing. We're on Yewa Creek, which is a feeder creek for Lake Somerville. This time of year, Yewa Creek is a popular spot for a particular fish. We're out here looking for white bass during the white bass run. Uh-oh, I got first fish. First white bass of the day. It's a keeper. It's about an average white bass. They have to be 10 inches to keep. 16 inches is a trophy. We always do uh, first fish, biggest fish, and most fish, so I just got the first fish. The white bass run is very exciting because the numbers of fish you can catch. Number two for me. That one. Yeah, Elizabeth. Kosis. Got a nice one. <laughs> now I gotta get the hook out. Got one on? Yep, caught a fish, Dad. Nice, nicely done. Bigger than yours. <laughs> A beautiful fish. Look at the sun shine off that thing. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> White bass, also known as sand bass, are fun to catch in rivers and lakes year round. But from January through May, large numbers of white bass make their way upstream to spawn. This annual event is known as the White Bass Run, and it's a fishing tradition for many Texans. We in Texas have uh, some really top-notch, world-class white bass fishing. I got a couple bumps in that little pocket down there. Three main factors impact the White Bass Run. As the days get longer and longer, the white bass start perking up a little bit, and they start moving towards these tributary streams. They like water temperatures around 50 degrees to trigger them to really commit to coming up into the river. And then a little bit of rain, a little bit of extra flow really helps too. There's a nice fish. Nice white bass. Cool to see them in such good health. This one's a really nice chunky fish. A single large female can lay up to a million eggs. We're gonna release this fish. It's gonna go on to make a lot more white bass. I like fishing because I enjoy it. It's like a sport to me. It's fun to see how many I can catch each time that I go. You want to keep your point of your rod low down so when you jerk your jig, it goes straight. Also, keep your line taunt. If the line's not taunt, you can't feel the fish bite. There we go. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Nice fish. Got a nice size white bass. <laughs> Fishing for white bass is very active. Sometimes we'll fish for long enough that your arms get really tired. Caught a fish. Fish on. Not a very big one. Nicely done, though. I didn't even realize it had a bite at first. I thought it had a snake. <laughs> Evelyn just caught her third fish in this hole. Elizabeth has one out of here, and I haven't got one yet out of this hole. One of the many things I learned from my dad in fishing is to adapt to the situation Sometimes you get to one hole and you might not catch a fish at all, but then you move down to another one and you'll catch five or eight back to back. Does that bend look good, girls, right down there? Yes, it does. Let's go try that. Yeah. I love hanging out with my family, catching fish. It's also just fun to be out in nature. Yeah. Hearing the birds sing in the water run is just very serene. Those are sandhill cranes. Yeah, they sound awesome. I've been taking my daughters fishing since before they could fish. I would carry them in a car seat and <laughs> I'd bring them out to a fishing spot where they could catch bluegill. We'd go fishing and get them catching fish. I've been fishing as long as I can remember. I am very happy that I have a dad that always takes me out. Part of the reason he always takes us out is because he enjoys seeing us have fun. One of the most enjoyable things about fishing for me with my daughters is watching them catch fish. Got a white bass. <laughs> when they light up and you see that smile, that's the success. Got one. Woohoo! Nice job. 
I'm really looking forward to all the future times that I get to come back here and do this with my girls.